Well, welcome back everybody to the uh, final video of The Gentle Lady. So, now then, I have a wing, which I've covered, and you'll notice that I've also added the little um, band protector. That just goes on the back, that goes on before you do the covering. One little tip about the covering, when you're covering, make sure that you tack down the rear spar first before you do any shrinking because it's got an undercover to it, uh, under camber to it and um, if you don't and if in other words you shrink between the trailing edge and the main spar you'll end up with a flat bottomed wing section so that's my wing and I've also done my fuselage now one thing to note on the fuselage at the moment I haven't put the band retention in you might find that in your instructions they suggest that you do that and that's perfectly fine the reason I haven't done mine is I just think it's going to make it easier for me to thread my controls through because once we've got that carbon fiber and the little bits of block to go through there it makes it slightly more fiddly not impossible by any stretch of imagination but just making it my making my life slightly more easier so I've just left out the band retentions at the moment and also I've covered my tail surfaces and they're all ready to go so the first thing we're going to talk about doing is actually what we're going to do is we're going to hinge these first we're going to hinge our control surfaces and I'm going to talk you through that and then we're going to look at installing the servos and the servo runs and then attaching the tail surfaces um, to the wings. Um, I might just flip that around so I might join the, the tail and the rudder first to the fuselage and then just add the push rods afterwards. So here we go. First thing we're going to do is hinging the control surfaces. Right, I've pinned my um, fin down. What I've also done is I've just put a pin in here and a pin at the end and that actually stops them just touching so it, the pins are giving me a, just a little gap. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay this um, tape from Angel Wing Designs onto this and I'm going over the top of both at the moment and you want about the same amount of tape either side so in other words you want as much tape on the fin as there is on the rudder pop that on there like so there we go and then I'm going to take all the pins off take the spacing pin out like so and then I'm now just going to cut this and see what we've got full movement and I'm just going to cut this tape um, there you go Right, so I've just tidied up my tape and all I'm going to do very gently with the back of the, this knife I'm just rubbing and you can see all the air and the discoloration goes and I have to say I have a firm belief that this gentle massaging does actually help with the glue adhesion but as I've got to say this is very good stuff and once it's on it ain't coming off right so there we go So I've hinged my uh, fin, now I've just done the tape the one side. What I like to do for belt and braces is fold it over like so and then run another tape strip along here, along here and then along here, so one piece. Let me show you. Right, so I've now folded mine back so the, the tape hinge that we've put on is on the inside. I've just got this clamp with a little bit of bolt, scrap bolster here just to hold it in place. Now I'm going to stick the tape to here and then roll it over across this centre section and then over the back piece. That's all one piece of tape. So um, let's see how this goes doing it on video. Right, so I'm going to go on there, 
like so. Now, I've just cut that. So I'm now just going to cut this. And obviously you want to cut that at a slight angle. And then I am just going to... I'm trying not to use a knife if I can help it because if you're not careful you could end up putting the knife through the covering which is going to spoil your day now so that's what I've got and I'm now just going to slowly just rub the tape over the edge like so just slowly rubbing up and down so it goes over both like so and then the final piece then goes on to the outside nicely rubbed down take my clamp off and then that is a mega strong hinge um, for your control surfaces um, there is a way of doing this by using the covering but um, as a beginner's guide I'm just using the tape and um, that so that's the sort of movement that you're looking for. Uh, so I'm going to do exactly the same with the elevator. So I've got the elevator pinned down and the process you've just seen me do, I'm going to do exactly the same on the tail plane. Remembering that you've identified the top and we've got our um, slope underneath to accommodate. And I've got these two pins just to give me just enough gap for it to move up and down okay let's talk about um, hinging so I've done the rudder first now top tip couple of top tips here some of the more observant of you will have noticed that my push rod guide for the rudder comes out on the right hand side of the plane you look at the plants on the left hand side I'm just an old traditionalist always do everything to the right <laughs> no uh, basically, yeah, I wasn't paying attention, doesn't make any difference if you've done exactly the same, it just makes sure that your horn goes on the right hand side. So let me just show you what I've done. Um, your horns will look slightly different in your kit to mine, because uh, these this is all development stuff. Um, so all I've done is, I've made myself a small channel, look, just there, I cut myself out a small channel, and then I have then cut my horn to fit in so the golden tip when you're putting these control horns on um, first thing is get your control wire and actually feed it through the control horn so that you know that it's going to work what you don't want is having to try and open this hole up once you've got it fitted now the other thing to remember, and it's the, the biggest mistake people make when they're putting radio control um, uh, horns on radio control models, the holes, so your control hole wants to be directly over the hinge line. So the hinge, you, you don't want your hinge here, you don't want your hinge anywhere, but you want those holes over the hinge line that will give you the maximum amount of throws if you end up sticking your sort of hinge about here then you're not going to get the throws you'll need and what will happen is it'll only work one way and not the other so remember that make sure that the holes are over the hinge line so i'm now going to stick this in i'm going to use a medium super glue you could use alphatic resin if you want to but I'm just going to put some um, medium cyano I'm going to make sure that when I actually glue it in I'm just going to pop a rudder there a pop a ruler there and make sure it's standing square like so and I'm now going to get on to showing you the um, elevator right so the elevator horn has got to go right in the middle like so. So I'll tell you what I did. 
I matched mine up with the fuselage and then looked down and made sure and measured that I got about the same amount of can you see that this the plate here either side and then just made sure that it was all square and then I marked it with a pen and then did exactly the same as the rudder I've now um, cut mine out fits in there like so okay so we're now we are getting very close to a, a sort of a final uh, assembly procedure now we have hinged our rudder and elevator and also in the kit we're going to have to add the rudder to fix like so now I believe in the actual kit there are a couple of slots to actually uh, cut so I've only got one because mine is a development model and we did feel that perhaps it needed a little bit more strength than just one single post so what I've done is I've just measured a center line down the middle of the uh, tail plane and what you've got to make sure and I've just cut myself a hole or a square for the, the square rudder post to fit in like so now what you've got to do is make sure that your rudder doesn't overhang the tail plane because otherwise your rudder's not going to work um, but there's uh, some nice uh, instructions on about doing this so I've cut mine already now I've just checked and I've fitted it on like so and that all looks superb now what we're going to do now is we're not joining this at the moment what we're going to do is we're going to get our everything ready to start installing our gear so the next thing I'm going to do is I've got my servo tray far far easier to fit your servos into this first so in other words we're going to screw some little holes where the servos are going to have now let's talk about servos so Andy has designed this gentile lady around this um, it's a Kings Max servo and there's a link on the uh, page where you can buy where you buy the gentle uh, gentile lady um, these servos it's a Kings Max servo and it's a CLS 0411H it's a digital servo that's it there I would highly recommend just just for ease I'd get it through a new wing designs so my servos top tip just take the stickers off off the side of the servos and um, mine drops straight in so I've now put my servos in place and now what I'm going to do is I am just going to mark where the holes go or where this I'm going to put the screws like so and then with those marked I'm now going to drill some little pilot holes and then we're going to pop the screws in make sure so in other words we've got everything we know is fit so there's my marks look so I'm now just going to mark, mark those and I'm just going to drill some little pilot holes then I'm going to make sure that the screws go in and when I take the screws out I'm just going to add a little bit of sign out around the hole let it dry and then just it just gives you a, it makes it's what it basically does is it stops the um, the holes splitting into the into where the servo will fit. Another good tip. I've put a little arrow underneath mine, so I know which way my servo tray fits. Okay, so the process was I <clears throat> got my servos screwed into the servo tray, got all the holes prepared, and then just put my you won't get the servo tray in with the servos on it so I unscrewed them and then I put the servos just back in to get my some idea of height and then you can see don't be tempted to glue your servo tray to the bottom of the wing mount you might look at that and think to yourself mm, that's a sensible place with a lot of strength I nearly did that and the servos will be sticking above sticking into the wing so I have now centered my servos with my radio control equipment made sure that everything is neutral and um, I am now going to start looking at um, putting 
the thought process behind how we're going to join the tail plane with the control surfaces. Right, so the control tube I have cut in half. Now, do not use scissors. If you try and cut that with a pair of scissors, what will happen is the tube will crush and you'll find that you'll get some resistance with your control wire. Use a very sharp knife if you can, one of these, and what I will normally do is I'll just normally just roll it backwards and forwards over where I've marked. Now let me just show you where I'm actually going to go with this. So I have the tube ends about halfway here, look, about halfway down this slot for the elevator. And then up here, I'm going to finish mine just where the serve this side for the, for the elevator. Um, I'm going to mark mine just where uh, the servo tray starts because we want enough for the wire to be able to move up and down. And also, this extra length means that we might be able to glue just a little bit here to give us a little bit of extra security. So, I'm going to cut this one and I'm going to talk you through the next bit of the process. So just as a guide for the elevator one, which is going to be going on my uh, left hand side, 360, so it's 36 centimeters or 360 mil. Um, so don't hold me to that, but that's going to give you a rough guide of the length. And anyway, so let's crack on. Okay, so I have got my the elevator push rod at the moment, and I have just got the elevator push rod. I've got that just uh, taped with a bit of masking tape. I use masking tape because I just don't want it flapping about, and I want to keep the exact position of where it is. I'm now going to do exactly the same thing for the rudder. So I'm just going to prepare my hole, I'm going to feed the um, rudder tube in and um, I'll show you where I've left that and the dimensions on that one. So I have fed in my, that's how far out my uh, tube is coming and uh, also the rudder tube is finishing just by where the servo tray is could possibly come back a little bit short on that but that dimension is 320 mil there will be some directions and indications in your um, instructions but that's exactly how I'm doing mine so now we have to think about how we're going to be adding the tail and getting everything ready uh, for um, fixing the tail plane and the rudder right also so the next thing we're going to do, we've got our wire, our control push rod, and I am going to cut this in half. Now, little very important safety tip, not just a top tip, but a safety tip. Obviously, decent pair of uh, wire cutters. Place it right as close to the end of the jaws as possible, so in other words there, because that's where all the strength is. The further out, there's less strength. So if you put that right in there like so. now. I'm holding that. I've got both hand, both. I've got my hands covering and grasping the wire. So this is grasping one end and this is grasping the other. I normally look away. Just be careful you haven't got your fingers trapped in the top because that's an easy one to do. There you go. And the purpose for me holding it like that, because if you cut it, this could fire off somewhere. At worst, it'll have your eye out. At best, it means you might end up, believe me, these get lost in the cabin all over the place. So, very easy. So, it's a very good safety tip. And make sure that when you're cutting wire, that there aren't people stood around you. Because, again, it's very easy to look around if you're holding the wire and stick it in somebody's eye. So, just be careful. So, now, one end for the elevator. I have bent that up. I have bent that up. That for the elevator is going to go on the it's going to connect to this bit. So what I intend to do is I am going to add my Z bend as it's called like so 
and then I'm going to feed it all in ready to glue on. Now one last thing we have to do before we actually glue uh, the tail plane on. Don't do it uh, on the film because the film is just going to peel off. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hold my tail plane in position like so. Make sure that it's looking square like that and then what I am going to do is very very fine pencil I'm just going to and I'm sure I'm just going to run down the sides either side and now I've got a mark what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently go down with a knife and remove the film so we're gluing bolsa to bolsa so that's the next thing is I'm just going to take this film off remember get the right side and then um, I'm going to show you how I'm going to glue it on. Also, top top tip with your wire, after you've cut it, I normally just give it a couple of licks away with the file because it turns it into a nice point. Because sometimes when you're cutting the wire, it will just get a little bit of a burr as it's folded over. So, <clears throat> I have prepared my tail plane. I have the push rod for my elevator and I am now going to feed my push rod into the elevator and I'm just going to check, pop it in there and just make sure that it's a nice smooth movement. Um, little top tip here. Yeah, little little top tip here don't tell the rest of the experts but if you happen to have a can of spray that says it's silicon spray just give the wire a little bit of a spray and then just wipe it off because look at that make so sure it's super smooth but we'll keep that one between us So I am now going to feed this through. I'm going to connect my elevator. I'm then going to pop my elevator in place. I'm going to hold it in place. Um, you could gently pin it if you want to, just to make sure. And then I'm going to get my uh, main wings and I'm just going to check that my um, tail plane is on square relation to the wing. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So there we go, I've got my tail pane clamped and all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure from this tip to this tip and make sure that the dimension from this tip to that tip is exactly the same. And the other thing we're just going to do is we're just going to look down and make sure that it all looks level. And what you want to do is eyeball the distance between the tail plane here and the bottom of the wing. Just that gap there and just that gap there. Then when you're happy, the only other thing I am going to do is I'm just going to pop the um, fin on to make sure that it all looks square. And then when we've done that, I'm then going to glue my tail plane in place. So what I've done is like the elevator, I've sat my um, rudder in place, I've just cut away, so all I've done is sat it vertically and just literally went round with a knife. And um, so I'm now, I've connected my Z-Bend, so the wire has been, I gave it that special spray, the, sprayed the wire and then um, all I'm going to do now is I'm popping this in place. And remember, this needs to be at 90 degrees to the fuselage, so we're going to need ourselves, you know, get yourself a roulette or something like that. Just stand it up on the fuselage and make it square. The other thing I would do as well, before you actually do any gluing, is I would just put the main wings on and just have a general eyeball. One last thing, when you've got it in place, just make sure everything is moving smoothly. So 
I'm just going to finish this off. So I'm going to literally, I'm going to, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put a little pin right in the front. I'm going to eyeball everything. Now I'm going to be using um, Sino. Just be careful what you don't want to do. But don't, don't, don't get any Sino round here, round where the pipe is or where your tube and push rod come out because that will be the end of your model. You'll have to rip that all out and start again. So be very, very careful. And if you want to and you're not happy, I would say pin it in place, get some either PVA or super fatic and leave it overnight. Because if you get cyano or super glue down inside your control runs, it's game over. Anyway, I'm just gonna go and see if I can jam this up. <laughs> and I'll get back to you to finish off the other end. Oh, we're getting very close. Right, now then. We've just got the Z-Bend to bend at the front. Now, get yourself two bits of scrap <clears throat> and you can see where I've just got, um, one's a clamp, one's a closed peg. You could use two closed pegs, two clamps, but I just thought I'd use this to show you. Uh, so basically I've clamped that elevator in position so it's not gonna move. Then, having centered my servo, all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the servo wire. Also note I haven't glued this at the moment. Where the um, cable and tube come through I haven't glued that. I am just going to make hold that over there like so and I'm going to mark this wire right over the center like so and then I that is my pivot point for bending my U bend uh, bending my Z bend so there I have bent my Z bend as before and now all I'm going to do is make sure that I've got enough wire that goes along I'm going to grip either side go and then that's the bit I've got left and then all I need to do now is just to <laughs> right so there you go I've got my rudder is now clamped up um, there's the Z bend that I've put on for the elevator and now all I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that over the hole the wire over the hole of the server arm make sure that your server arms are centered and um, before you actually start doing this and then when I've cut this and done the Z bend from this the only thing we need to do now is I'm just going to put a tiniest blob of medium Sino uh, because what you don't want you don't want super glue wicking back under here and then get in between the wire and the tube because that'll be your, that'll be your glider finish. That'll be a nightmare sorting that out. So anyway, I'm just going to do the C bend and I'm just going to show you one last thing we need to do. Right, well hopefully you've got your gear installed and you've got your control movements. <clears throat> I don't think they're going to need massive amount of movement, but we'll find out when we actually do the test flight and then I'll feed back to you. The controls that I've used. Now the very last thing I'm going to do is obviously we're going to cut these out and you want a large one and a small one and then you want your bit of carbon which I've cut in half and the big boy goes on first and then the little one is afterwards. So the idea is that is what you're looking for and I've done the one in the front so that's how the one in the front looks and I'm just going to insert the one in the back right one gentle lady completed um, she runs in at 180 grams um, now 
I'm going to give you all the specs about the movements and the C of G because I'm going to do some C of G um, testing on the actual test flight. But there she is, ready to go. I've got to say, by the feel of it, is she's going to be a real floater. So anyway, um, gentle lady, angel wing designs. This has been a very, very thorough build process. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do, please just like and subscribe. And um, we've got some more fun projects coming up.